Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to another Quran moment recorded on the 28th of August 2016, 25 Dhul Qa'dah, the year 1437 of the Hijri calendar. We continue with our journey through Surah Al Baqarah, ayah number 26. I'm just going to again recite up to the first stop in the ayah. A'udhu billahi min ash shaytanir rajeem. إن الله لا يستحي أن يضرب مثلا ما بعودة فما فوقها. We covered these two sections at the beginning. Indeed, Allah is not timid. إن الله لا يستحي. Not timid to do what? أن يضرب مثلا ما. To present an example. We read about the meaning of مثل and يضرب and this word ما which means any. Today we're going to read about what is this example, for example, so what is this example that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wishes to present? He has mentioned one of them, Ba'udatan fama fawqaha, Ba'udah, that of a mosquito, fama fawqaha, or what is smaller than it. So let's just go through these words here. The word Ba'udah, what exactly is a Ba'udah? And in Arabic, al-ba'udha wahidatul ba'ud. Ba'ud, remember, is the noun of genus, ismul jins. And when we want to make it into a singular, we add the ta marbuta at the end. Like baqar, baqara, shajar, shajara, ba'ud, ba'udha. And it is defined as hashratun sagiratun tutlaq ala namus. It is a small insect or what we may want to call an arthropod in the scientific term and it is used uh, to name a namus or mosquito here is a picture of a mosquito which is obviously a very amplified because mosquitoes are very small now what does fama fawqaha mean? if you look at this in the ayah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says ba'udha and then Allah, say, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says fama fawqaha what does this fama fawqaha mean? So, let's look at how this can be translated. And this is the miraculous nature of the Qur'an. Because in what looks apparently innocuous wording, or simple wording, there's actually quite hidden depth. Let's read what the scholars say. وَالْمُرَادُ فِيمَا فَوْقَهَا فِي الْحَجَمْ So what is meant by this? Fawq literally means above. Okay, it can be either physically above or it can be metaphorically above. Well, muradu fama fil hajam. So, in size, something can be greater than or above in size. So, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in this ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in this ayah that He is not timid to present an example of a mosquito or something above it fama fawqaha the literal translation so if it is fawqaha in hajam in size then it means something that is actually physically bigger than a mosquito what are these examples in the quran that are so number one al-dhubab the fly wal ankabut a spider occurs in the quran wal kalb the dog wal himar all of these are examples quoted in the quran and each one of these is fawqa they are bigger, they're above the mosquito in terms of size. How else can we translate this? So, So, something can be above or greater than something else, not in terms of its size, but in terms of the meaning, the reason why you use this as an example. So the reason a mosquito is used as an example is to show something that is very small and very insignificant. So if something is greater than it in insignificance, then it would mean it is actually smaller than it. So, as-sigar wal-haqaratu ka janahiha aw ka So for example, the atoms uh, that are used in the Quran this is how the scholars have understood that this ayah can be translated as something 
physically smaller than the mosquito because it's referring to greater than it in terms of meaning or something bigger than the mosquito in terms of size and to give evidence for this if you look in Arabic uh, in the Sheikh Tantawi quotes this beautiful example نَحْوَ قَوْلِكَ لِمَنْ يَقُولُ this is similar to a sentence that they would say in Arabic فُلَانٌ أَسْفَلَ النَّاسِ وَأَنْذَلَهُمْ هُوَ فَوْقَ ذَلِكَ so he's saying, the person says, Fulanun, such and such a person, is Asfalun Nas, the most lowest of people. Wa anzalahum, and the most, uh, most low or base or vile of people. And then he refers to somebody, he says somebody uh, to somebody else, he says, Huwa fawqa dhalik. And that person is even greater than that, i.e. is even worse than that person, even lower. So you can use the word fawqa in the, in the in 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 the physical sense in hajam or you can use it in the sense of the meaning now an interesting question that's come up now with the advent of science and people trying to see is there compatibility between science and the Quran or is there something in the Quran that is indicating science so of course the Quran is not a book of science but it is a book of as uh, some of the du'at say it's a book of signs. It's there to point humanity to go and research and realize the great wisdom and amazing uh, ability of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we could ask the question is could we take the meaning fawqaha above the mosquito literally and say there's something that is living and that lives on top of the mosquito. So here's a question is there anything living literally on or above the mosquito? And Amazingly, there is a living organism that actually lives on top of some mosquitoes and it's called Bevuria bassiana, okay? And this is formerly known as Trititirachium shiote and it's an entomopathogenic fungus. Entomo means insect related, pathogenic, disease causing fungus, a living thing which is a parasite to a parasite. It's a parasite above living in, uh, sorry, not in, on a mosquito. And this parasite grows naturally in soil throughout the world and it acts as a parasite not only on mosquitoes but on a variety of arthropods, i.e. little insects. White flies, termites, thrips, aphids, beetles, caterpillars, weevils, grasshoppers, ants, m mealybugs, bedbugs and even malaria transmitting mosquitoes. And that is not just the sentence of somebody who wishes to show something in the Qur'an, but it's actually a quote from the OrganicSoilTechnology.com website. And this fungus is now being studied. So just to give you an idea, this is the mosquito's head has been blown up. And you can see there's actually a lot of surface area. There are lots of places where things can be. And that is actually a microscopic picture of the fungi the hyphids, the little things that make up the fungus here and as you can see the distance each one of there is 10 micrometers so that's 10 times uh, 10 to the minus uh, milli micro, 10 to the minus 6 so that's point zero 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 five zeros, and then you have a 1 meter it's very very small and these things gradually infect the surface of a mosquito and start to build up a white mesh around the mosquito and this white mesh covers the mosquito and stops it from breathing and slowly suffocates it and kills it so it just happens to be absolutely amazing that this ayah is pointing the human being uh, it, 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 is, it is capable of being interpreted in more than uh, one way very successfully and it's pointing to the amazing depth of creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and uh, anybody who reads the Quran with an open mind cannot fail to become Muslim and every Muslim who reads the Quran with an open heart cannot fail to become a mu'min a true believer in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we bear witness that indeed Allah is the only God worthy of worship and that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa is his messenger 
and is sadiq al mastuq everything he said turned out to be true may allah continue to increase his knowledge wa akhiru da'wana an alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin